Hi there, my name's DeWitt Wilkerson and I'd like to welcome you to our new office. Um, we're here in St. Petersburg, Florida, uh, where I've been practicing since 1982. I've been in the, had the good fortune of working with Dr. Peter Dawson and Dr. Pete Roach and Dr. Glenn DuPont for that whole period of time and we've had a great experience here together and from our practice has grown and the work of Dr. Dawson has grown the Dawson Academy. Its headquarters is directly above us on the second floor of our, of our office here. Um, we've had hands-on courses at the Dawson Academy for close to 20 years of which I've been participating. We've had over 4,000 dentists come through just our first hands-on course that I've taught and that's been a great experience and opportunity to share information and train dentists and uh, we want to talk today a little bit more about how we will bring patients into our practice and introduce them into the concepts of occlusion and complete dentistry. Uh, Dr. Peter Dawson has said that dentists are physicians of the masticatory system and one of the questions we're asked quite frequently at the Dawson Academy is exactly what do we mean by that. Um, dentists really have two roles uh, in the health profession today. Number one is we are there to help control the negative effects of microorganisms. That means bacteria. So we think of problems that can occur in the mouth like decay from bacteria or periodontal disease that can come from the negative effects of bacteria. So dentists have really gotten a great handle on how to control those things. We can preserve and protect their teeth for a lifetime and ensure that no matter how long they live, they will have their teeth their whole life. The second thing that dentists are responsible for is not only controlling the negative effects of microorganisms or bacteria, but also controlling the negative effects that can come from stresses or forces that are applied to the system. So if you overload the jaw system, uh, then you can see problems arise. You can have sore muscles from clenching and grinding. From muscle hyperactivity, you can see negative results on the teeth like wear and loose teeth and broken teeth, uh, chipped teeth, things like that. Sensitive teeth can become, uh, can uh, come into play because of overloading and stresses on the teeth, even sensitivity to cold and sweets and when teeth get into nerve problems, even hot. Um, so those are things that are affected by extra stresses being applied to the system. And of course you can go on up higher in the system and think about muscle problems like headaches, Jaw joint problems can come about as a result of overloading of the system through clenching and grinding like a mortar and pestle up there at the joint level. And if that's a weak link, then you can get into trouble up there and people come in complaining of joint pain and popping and clicking and locking. It can all be as a result of overloading of the system. So our role uh, as physicians of the masticatory system is to educate people about these concerns and help them to understand how those things can be prevented. Uh, one of the things that is a challenge for us is to begin telling people about or showing people what we see and uh, helping them to understand. So let me just share with you a couple of ways that we use in, in our practice to do that effectively. Uh, one is we really believe strongly in what we call co-discovery. So as we're looking at the, the system, we want to introduce concepts to the patients of what normal looks like and then help them see if their system is normal or not normal. For example, if we palpate a muscle, a muscle shouldn't be sore normally, but if it is sore, that means that muscle is overworked. A joint shouldn't be sore to touch or to seat and load, but if it is, then that's a red flag that there could be something wrong teeth should match up ideally in a way in which everything is in harmony but if they don't and there's a hit and slide or a mismatch in the way the teeth come together sometimes we'll see teeth that are loose or teeth that are chipping or wearing and the patient can begin to understand that as there is that normal is described and then we look for normal and we find abnormal it, it makes sense the other thing we'll do is collect information so not only will we take radiographs or x-rays of the teeth to look at the bone and 
health of the supporting structures as well as for decay, but we'll also gather information when appropriate that will help us to study the bite relationship. One of the main things that we use is an articulator. This is an instrument whereby we can take the teeth, take impressions, and mount this or put this together on this instrument whereby it represents how the teeth come together and function. It represents how the teeth touch when the patient's moving around left, right, and forward. So if someone shows signs of instability, and by that I mean wear, mobility, teeth that are moving out of position, then we often will recommend that we take impressions and make models of the teeth just like the orthodontist does with the children and then we'll study the bite this way and when we get back together in a consult room like this we'll be able to show uh, the patient that we're helping what problems we see. Another thing that's been extremely helpful in educating patients to see problems that are present are, are intraoral photographs. So you see just a couple of examples here on the screen whereby we can sit down and, and blow up uh, the image of the teeth and the bite and ask the patient, what do you see? And people will quickly start pointing out things like the chipped edges that you see here and the flat spots and the irregular edges down here with chipping and wear. And uh, Patients will quickly see that in their own mouths and kind of go, ooh, uh, that doesn't look good. And, and they'll begin to ask questions about what can be done about that. Another thing that we've used uh, in our practice for a number of years is what's called a T-scan. T-scan is a bite wafer uh, that measures forces as you bite onto this mylar wafer and it can be recorded by a computer. And with that we can then look directly on the computer screen with the patient and show them where the forces are distributed on their bite. For example, in this example, uh, you see that the bite forces, it says left and right, that 60% of the bite forces are on the right half of the bite and only 39 to 0.7% are on the left side of the bite. So the left side of the mouth and the right side of the mouth aren't hitting evenly. We can show this to people and they get it very quickly and appreciate and understand that. So between our exam doing co-discovery uh, together through the collection of study models and the use of that to demonstrate discrepancies Intraoral photographs, which vividly show signs of instability through wear, chipping, fractures, things like that. And then using the T-scan, which can help us to calibrate or 